in 10 years from now. These tweets are going to be pretty amazing. You don't want to start there, Thomas. You want to start with Jeff Sessions. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, Betsy. I can... Wait, wait. That's that familiar stench from the Department of... Yes, Justice, that... Oh, wait, it's gone. Well, oh, that's right. Sessions, someone woke him up and got that enemy of the state out. And what a pig that he didn't voluntarily leave. What a pig. The only thing he did was to drive down the stocks for marijuana. And marijuana and hemp have been shown to be some of the greatest healers. And the only thing he did the entire time he was there was obstruct justice, make sure nothing went ahead on the thing he's the most guilty of and that he was blackmailed with, which is his participation in three committees that supported the CFIUS approval of Uranium One. So he had blackmail hanging over his head. So for those of you who think that there was a plan with Sessions and Trump, well, and if those of you who believe such things as the words activated Sessions, uh, no, Sessions was deactivated, and he was never activated except as part of the resistance. He is very much like CNN's Acosta or Rat Rodenstein or Robert Mueller. They're enemies of the state, and they got to go. So Mr. Magoo... Here's the tea plan. Here's what Tianon had to say about you. Bye-bye, Magoo. Because why? You were a plant from the beginning who was being blackmailed because of your allegiance to Hillary Clinton and her Uranium One deal, as well as many other deals that you are obviously involved in that keeps the sword of Damocles hanging over your head. I am so glad you're gone. This is a great day. Here's what's going to happen. We can go into who Matt Whitaker is at another time, but let's just say Matt in the position he's in, which actually <laughs> technically they can question it, and I don't want to let people know this. But Well, then I'm going to cut that part of the audio out. No, you can't cut it out. The reality is Matt Whitaker is exactly what they think he is. He is a plant. He's the eyes and ears of Trump. Thank God. Thank God Trump has somebody on his side who's now going to work in the Department of Justice, which was the Department of Non-Justice until Rat Rodenstein is leaving, taking Mueller with him on the way out the door, which I hope doesn't hit Jeff Sessions in the ass, because I'm telling you, He's already he gone. Was, that ass hitting was a long time ago. He was the bottleneck that was causing the entire conspiracy to basically at this exact moment, still going on to this moment, to have a regime change right here, a George Soros regime change, questioning the outcome of elections, you see. But now we're going to go into that in a minute, the way that Trump has turned those tables and done exactly what he predict, we predicted he would do, and he's just so brilliant. But what's going to happen? All, it's, all of this is going to go forward when Rat Rodenstein, again, today, I'm sure, he went to Matt Uh, Whitaker and resigned again. That would be the sixth time he's resigned because he doesn't want to be questioned under oath while he still has that position because it'll send him to jail. So what's going to happen? Matt's going to call up Mueller and say, wrap it up, dude. And here's what's funny. Mueller's going to say, oh, no, I have to have Trump answer the questions. Trump's already got the questions answered. He's going to send them to you. And you're so stupid, Mr. Mueller. And you've been all along, by the way, uh, and by the way, you are a murderer because of 911 and the uh, your complicit uh, association with the criminals of 911. But what you don't know is as soon as Trump answers those questions and sends them over to you in writing, <laughs> uh, you're such a fool. Then he's going to use executive privilege if he wants to. And the report, which will be made to Matt Whitaker or someone else who might be the attorney general by that time, The report will then go to the president, and the president then deems whether or not it will be made suitable for the public or not. And because of executive privilege, if he answers any of your questions, he he can claim executive privilege. He should claim executive privilege. He will simply get the last laugh because he will make your stupid report completely private after Matt Whitaker comes out and tells everybody that it was a complete sham it was a complete witch hunt. It was a waste of time. And names the people and how much we paid them, senior executive service members, Robert Mueller and his gang of 17 angry Democrats, and maybe they can pay us back for all their wasted time. But anyway, great day in the neighborhood, Betsy. 
Well, that's a way to get started, and we haven't even gotten to the good stuff. Now, let's th- let's go for the first tweet. Um, it says, uh, Presidential Proclamation Addressing Mass Migration Through the Southern Border of the United States. Of course, that's to refer to the title of the link that's inside that tweet. And if you want to read these tweets along with us and see other really cool stuff I leave behind, make sure to go to the link in the description box under the YouTube. This is beautiful. Before Sessions lets the door hit him in the ass, Whitaker and the head of Homeland Security, Kirsten Nielsen, they've already... Who Secret Service did not take Christopher Strunk's writ of mandamus seriously. They took it as a threat. So Ooh, that was an aside. When you serve someone I'm, in the United States government, it's a threat. Right. If, it's, mm. if, if the president writes an executive order and says, citizens, if you see any election rigging, let us know. Don't take it to the Department of Homeland Security because Kirsten Nielsen and her bullies will tell you that you're a threat to the country. And don't take it to the Supreme Court because your I's and your T's weren't properly, you know, and noted. So we're only left with Mike Pence and we're watching and waiting. Is Mike Pence one of us? Is he a patriot or not? Well, this beautiful, beautiful thing that the president has written redefines what asylum means. Now, I want to put this in perspective. We now have a Democratic House. It is out of the House that these immigration bills will have to be passed concerning DACA, concerning uh, what the definition of asylum is, concerning what the definition of a family is, whether or not you can break up families, whether you can catch and release, whether you can actually release someone into the interior of America while they wait for their trial, which there are 750,000 illegal aliens here right now, right now, at this moment, waiting for trial, 90-some percent of them wait, it's almost 100%, don't show up for their trial. So what he is telling us is all very true. So if you read this beautiful, beautiful statement, this executive order, what it does is it gives him the complete authority to change it all up, to take all of the exclusions, all of the orders not to enforce that Obama wrote as executive orders in relationship to immigration, to DACA, to uh, basically clearly defining anchor babies, uh, inviting anchor babies, Obama did, into this country, inviting unaccompanied children, which was nothing but human trafficking. So what is going on with this? Oh, this is so beautiful. It's a message to the people in the caravan that all of the criminals who are from ISIS, from Al-Qaeda, from Hezbollah, from MS-13, and a dozens of other groups from Africa, from Somalia, from uh, Libya, from Syria, from Afghanistan. These are war fighters, okay? They're all going to be, in fact, locked up, folks. And they don't have any documentation with them. So they'll be locked up for a long, long time. Because when you come seeking asylum into a country, you better bring some ID and you better bring some proof that you are being terrorized and you fear for your life. Now, the Democrats tried to put a bill on the floor just some months ago, stating that the definition for asylum seekers in America is anyone who fears anything. Spiders? Yes. Arachophobia. Uh, You get in automatically. If you're afraid of rain, you get in. Any fear you have, doorways, you know, uh, being fat, being thin, whatever, it doesn't matter. All you had to show, do is show up and say, I fear. I am afraid. That's what that bill said. So what has Trump said? Oh, no, 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 no. Matter of fact, he's, he's, he didn't, I'm surprised because I, I've made a few mistakes lately. One was I was sure he would name uh, the countries that are sending these people here out of their prisons as uh, basically people that he's not going to let in. He's not going to do that. He was so crafty. He was so clever on this one. All he did was he built upon previous executive orders and the rule of law. And what he's done is he sent a message to the people in the caravan saying, if you did not file for asylum on the way here in the many uh, ports of call that uh, you can do that, where you can file for asylum in this country, in Mexico, or in your own country, you're not getting in. We're going to staff those asylum centers, but we have a new definition of asylum, and basically everyone in that caravan uh, does not meet those because they walked by other ports of entry where they could have filed asylum and they refused to. So they're walking into their own prison. Correct. Now, how are we going to notify the people of that? Are we going to drop flyers in uh, many different languages? How's that communication going to work? 
They, oh, well, don't send it by Facebook, okay? Correct. They should read Trump tweets. Because well, he's telling them very clearly what he's going to do. He's saying, sorry, we're going to break up your family. So what he's really saying is, no more Obama child trafficking. If you could get a child and you could get to the border of America, you got in. Period. You Because they couldn't break you up and you had to have catch and release because they had no place to store if a, if a MS-13 gang member has a little girl that he is human trafficking, which is exactly what they did in these cases, they only took the children across the border and then they sold them after, of course, they were human trafficked with all that that entails. And these are men with girl children that they stole in Mexico and used them to get across the border because Obama told them they could do this. He invited them to do this. This is a new definition of asylum, a new definition of what a family is, and you better bring your papers if that's your baby. If that's your baby, you want to stay with your baby, you better have your papers. Uh, none of them do, by the way. This sends a clear message to the warfighters that they're all going to jail. And he already stated that the 14th Amendment is very clear. He made this statement long before he was the president. He stated there are no such things as anchor babies. Complete nonsense. Anchor babies gave Obama a reason to create DACA, which was a deferment on deporting people. Why? Because if you got someone and you defer them being deported and they have a baby, now they have an anchor baby, now you don't have to deport them, now they're DACA, but they got an anchor baby. We've said this all along. 2.5 million of them that we know of, that's the lowest numbers that we can come up with. So when they talk about 700,000 DACA, that's all wrong. So Trump is going to get rid of DACA there is no provision for DACA, and he's anxious, anxious to have the courts contest this. He just put 29 federal uh, judges in place, and soon the Supreme Court will be so conservative that anything that goes to the Supreme Court, they won't take it to the Supreme Court because they'll know that how it's going to pass. 22 million illegal aliens minimum. It's actually many more, but we told you that's what it was. The FBI has proven that. 2,000 people coming across our border every single day, illegal aliens, criminals, human traffickers, drug, uh, CIA, rogue CIA, pregnant Chinese women, you name it, 2,000 of them a day. I know you could go on and on about that, and it's very important, but these other tweets are also important because it is about election rigging. So the next one is uh, Brian Kemp, Georgia, ran a great race in Georgia. He won. It's time to move on. And that's in reference to Stacy, who's uh, contesting the election. She thinks she won it. You see, but what Stacey that Abrams is... Stacey Abrams, that is. Yes, Stacey Abrams, of course. And what we see there is that even Obama and Oprah, the perfect ticket, got still the worst results I've seen in any election in modern history. And then they want to contest it. The only one reason they'd want to contest it, that's if they knew it was rigged to begin with. Why would they contest? The, she was a huge loser. The biggest loser. And you want to contest the biggest loser's results? Only one reason. Because Obama knew it was rigged and it wasn't supposed to go that way. Well, let me give you my guess. And this is speculation, but I, you know, we sent out a call to all the network engineers that knew how to uh, make sure that these uh, transfers that were going over to the European Union and Ireland and everything were protected. So we called out the, our network engineers, and it looks like whoever uh, worked on the Georgia situation, you did a great job. So kudos to you. This was unexpected. So what do they do? They they were going to rig it. Stacey Abrams was going to win. They wake up, Kemp wins, and it's actually the real vote. This is a real a red pill for them to swallow. So now when we look at Broward County, another county that was rigged, and so what do they have to do? They have to ship in paper ballots because their rigging, their electronic rigging didn't work the way they had planned. And it's all exposed. And as we go through these uh, further Trump tweets, these tea drops, these tea anon, tea clearance, incredible insight if people would read them. And if you can read in between the lines, then you get even more insight. And here's what's in between the lines in that one. We called out, along with others, the White Hats to help protect those little cells so the tallies were correct. And as you pointed out, the Abrams tallies were correct. And that upset the Democratic machine so bad 
that they demand a recount. Well, what what is really happening in Florida? That is Hillary calling in Joe Sullivan and others like him in trust and other companies that have the crypto keys that our election votes have to go through them before they are actually go to the state. Now, stop right there because you and Michael McKibben just did an amazing audio describing who this Joe Sullivan is. And we need everybody to pay attention to Joe Sullivan. He is the guy that we need to get. And um, I'll put that link of that audio in the description box. And so they can call in their recount, but I'm sorry, the White Hats, whoever did that, can do it again. And this time in Florida, maybe the White Hats can get it together to freeze those tallies. But as we know, in Florida, there's, it's endless corruption in the voting. It always comes to Florida, and it's always corruption in Florida. But anyway, what will happen is Hillary will call in her company in trust and use the crypto keys to try to manipulate it. But now, remember, Trump is saying he's watching. Let's go on to the next, next tweet, and we'll get into what Trump told them, and they seem to have ignored it. Too bad they should read his tweets. Yes. You mean... They are just now finding votes in Florida and Georgia, but but the election was held on Tuesday. Let's blame the Russians and demand an immediate apology from President Putin. I hope they notice that's tongue in cheek, but I hope they notice that that is mm, that is him coming out and drawing his sword. He's getting ready and he's coming after all y'all, and he isn't doing it by himself. He's got Rubio, uh, senator in Florida, going after the corrupt election. He's got people going after George Soros. Remember, George Soros bought and paid for those elections in Florida and Georgia. He bought and paid for them, okay? Now, guess what? If they were rigged, George Soros, being part of the rigging, hmm, he can then have sanctions put on him. And no one will even know it. George Soros' kingdom could be being drained as we speak. But what's really going on here? We need to see that the nonsense that they tried to perpetrate on Trump during the elections that Putin was in bed with Trump and that's the meddling that was going on. No, this meddling is directly from Obama, Hillary, the U.S. Digital Service and everything we told you about. But now remember, which they seem to have forgotten, that in his executive order about meddling in the election, he said he would prosecute all of them happily. And he said in his recent presser that he in two weeks will be producing a report on the meddling in the election. Now, this is a man, a president, who just wrote an executive order saying he's going to lock them up, everyone involved in meddling, and now he's calling it out tweet after tweet after tweet, and we're seeing it blatantly. We told everyone that's what was going on. They said, why isn't he stopping uh, Lord uh, Nicholas Clegg coming over and basically one of the most powerful people in Britain taking over Facebook so that there is no more free speech? Why didn't he stop? Google and their manipulation? Why didn't he stop all the conservatives being kicked off of Twitter? Why didn't he stop the hundreds of people who were kicked off of Facebook and Google who were conservatives? It's all part of the antitrust it's, RICO monopoly case, folks. It's a sting. He it's said, a sting. And you, and you have to commit the crime in order to be charged with a crime. So he just left them enough noose, I mean, oops, rope to hang, oh, hang themselves. Isn't that interesting? Now, the next one is also an interesting tweet because those of you who follow us will know who Mark Elias is and you will know what Perkins Coie is. Let's read the tweet. As soon as Democrats sent their best election stealing lawyer, a Mark Elias, to Broward County, they miraculously started finding Democrat votes. Don't worry, Florida. I'm sending much better lawyers to expose the fraud. And that fraud is in capital letters, Thomas. That is one of the most explosive things I've ever seen him uh, say or do or write. He just called election fraud in Florida. He just called Mark Elias, the person and the county that it's being done in. Hello? Now, Matt Whitaker now can take that as a direct order because anything the president says in public can be taken as an order to his subordinates in the DOJ and the FBI and the CIA. And so that is a direct order. You know how many of those he gave to Sessions? So many that we were tired of counting them. Now, we're going to see what's happening. What did he just say? Oh, obviously he's already talked to Matt. He's sending lawyers. Now, question. There's only a few good things that a lawyer 
um, can be used for, and none of them are good, matter of fact, uh, but they make, you know, like, um, well, I won't get into the negative jokes, but let's just say no lawyer should be involved in an election ever. Why? Why did an election go to the Supreme Court? Why? Well, because, because that's where they can control things, and no machine. one's worse than Mark Elias. $12 million paid by Fusion GPS, created the Russian dossier, and he's not in jail yet? Well, well and explain this relationship to Perkins Coie. Well, he, he's the person who... Perkins Coie represents um, the Democrats, uh, particularly, but also Republicans. But anytime there's any crooked anything going on and there's big money, it is Perkins Coie. And Perkins Coie fights everything all over the place. They're a huge law firm. They should be closed down. They are enemies of the state. Now, if we look at what is being said here, Browder County, I like to call that the home of the FBI counterintelligence false flags. We got Debbie Wasserman Schultz. We've got the Parkland shootings. Just recently, we had some the Maga bomber. Oh yeah, duh. I mean, it's just so much corruption down there, one after the other, and they only have limited players on their team, so they have to keep reusing the Mark Eliases and the Debbie Wasserman Schultzes. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the last count I saw, had won by ninety-eight thousand votes. They've got to keep her there in her position because she holds back the whole Imran Awan scandal, which puts the entire Congress under scrutiny. Oh, yes, and also the Department of Justice, who did not conduct a fair trial of the largest espionage case in American history, uh, of course, not counting Hillary Clinton. But it was part of Hillary Clinton, so I always have to be, you know, put in a little segue there. Now, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is under indictment uh, from the Federal Election Commission for her uh, handling of the $84 million from Maine that somehow slipped into Hillary's victory fund. Uh, she's under indictment um, for the election fraud coming from all the other states that uh, they sent. They'd send in one check. She would then parcel it out to all the states and then turn around and have those states donate it to Hillary. She stole money from Bernie's uh, election. And Let's remember, 17 states were found to have absolute 100% corruption between in the primaries between Hillary and Bernie, and nothing happened. That's Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I guess she can do whatever she wants because uh, she's such a good friend of Hillary's, I, I assume. So you, you nailed it. You nailed the other things I was going to say about that. And whenever you say Perkins Cooey, spit on the ground because they are disgusting. <coughs> Perkins Cooey. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so now we've got Jeff Flakey doesn't want to protect the non-Senate confirmed special counsel. He wants to protect his future after being unelectable in Arizona for the crime of doing a terrible job. A weak and ineffective guy. You see, these are the ones that he pointed out, Trump pointed out, and we pointed out, there was a historic amount of people getting out. You see, why? Because they're corrupt. So when they're running right now and on the way out, they're making nasty remarks. That's how corrupt they are. They're just telling you who they are and what they're about. What he's really insinuating here is he's basically saying, I know what you're coming up with, you rhinos and you dims. You're going to tell us that Mark Whitaker can't have that position because he wasn't confirmed for it. You're incorrect. This is an emergency situation because I have, President Trump can say this, three executive orders that say we are in the state of national emergency. And the reason we are is because our southern border is being attacked and Jeff Sessions did nothing about it. Let's not forget that those imbeciles who say that Jeff Sessions was the strong arm of immigration in the White House. No, he wasn't. What did he do to the last caravan? Nothing. He's a they climbed over the wall. They came over. They probably raped and killed. And what did Sessions do? Nothing. What was he doing about this caravan? Nothing. All he wanted to do was criminalize marijuana seize your assets before you're even charged with a crime, continue the U.S. Patriot Act, which turned into the U.S. Freedom Act, which is 100% illegal against the U.S. Constitution. He is so bad that I don't even have in my mind a worthy thing for him to go and be subjected to right now. I can't think of anything Okay, bad well, enough. let's get on because, Sorry. you know, we got to focus on the future and all the amazing things that can happen now. Um, for Here's another tweet. Rick Scott was up uh, 50,000 votes on election day, and then they found many votes, and he's only up 15,000 votes. Up the Broward effect. How come they never find Republican votes? 
And of course, they don't find Republican votes because you see, George Soros has got to be pretty upset. He spent so much money on the Florida election and their, uh, the rigging didn't work. You have to imagine that in cyber warfare, our battles are being fought in a place that you can't see. The paper ballots are transferred into digits and then there's an attack on those digits to claiming who's got what. And so that was taking place as we've reported before. These votes found their way over to foreign actors who could have manipulated them, and most certainly that's why they move them over to foreign countries and actors, bring them back, and then voila, you already have ISIS management that's preconditioned you from the television that, you know, the votes are very close or the person you think is going to win. Remember that Gillum and DeSantis governor uh, blurb that came up early on where DeSantis was leaving, uh, w that Gillum was leading DeSantis. That was before the election was even over that day. So what they do is they precondition you. And then, of course, even before that, they're giving you fake polls. So then when election day comes and all of this is unraveling, the opponent says, okay, I'll concede. And what we said is, don't concede. None of you should be conceding. The other thing is, as you look at the, in the House of all the winning candidates, look how many of them are former CIA, FBI people. It's alarming. Our friends over at State of the Nation have pointed this out because they have to put their own people in place now to protect themselves from the many crimes they've committed. Sorry. Uh, no, that's exactly what I was going to say. Oh, good. The exact same words, except I was going to say rigged, 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 or yeah. rigged to the hundredth power. But this is good because... We don't need everybody to understand who Bob Sullivan is and how this uh, certification process works and all the details. The important thing is if our cyber patriot warriors that work with the president directly, or even if you're working independently, legally, it's important that you know those details. As far as the president and the tweets that he sends out, if he just tells the average person, hey, Scott was up 50,000 and now... He's only up 15,000, and hey, where are the Republican votes? They see that as, hey, that's unfair. This is rigged. That's all we need them to see. And what you said was so interesting. The initial uh, statements that came out, even before the election started that day, I bet if we look at that, that Gillum wins, and we look down at the bottom and we see the numbers, it's going to be these numbers. It's going to be the fake numbers, which means that before the election started, they already decided what the vote count was going to be. And that's what they're going to now make it match up because they know that that will be believable, you see. So they have to make it close. They have to make it so that people can believe that, oh my goodness, uh, we almost won. And it's always the Republicans, as he points out, that you know there's no Republican votes being found. And let's remember, George Soros poured more money into Secretary of States and these low positions who count votes. So whoever the election commissioners or whoever the secretary of states are, whoever's responsible for votes, that's where George Soros poured in billions of dollars into this year's and last uh, and in 2016 for those particular positions. Why? Because they're bought and paid for. He paid for these elections. And the one who's in Browder County has been doing this for years. Her name's what? Snipes, I believe it is. Yeah. And she's been doing this for years. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it's going to be rigged, and nothing happens. Well, yes, but now they're not in control. We are, and we have a president who deeply cares about this country, and that's a big difference than having Clinton and Bush and all of them, Obama. Um, paper ballots. We need to go to paper ballots. I have no problem that they're counted digitally, but we need to preserve those paper ballots, and they need to be recounted in a bipartisan chain of custody way, in a public setting, so that everybody knows one legal voter equal one vote. And I'm afraid we're gonna just have to go to that. You can't take a something that exists in the three-dimensional physical world, put it into digits, you don't see it, Anybody can change it. I mean, my goodness, how many bad actors do we have in this whole thing that we're describing? We just have to keep it on paper. Not everything is better when it's driven by technology. The next tweet reads, Mayor Gillum conceded on election day and now Broward County has put him back into play. Bill Nelson conceded election. Now he's back in play. This is an embarrassment to our country and to democracy.
and to them because they're going to look bad in orange. That's called meddling, folks. That's called election corruption. That's called felonies, each and every one of them. When you concede, you don't get to go back. Right there. For that reason alone, every single voter who had anything to do with those particular elections should say that this was fraud, exactly as Trump said. We need a new election. And we pointed out to all of the Republican MAGA and also Democrat MAGA, do not concede on that night because ISIS management controls AVID, which controls what they say on election night. It's called Leader Plus. They took that name from Leader Technologies. They think that's a joke. They stole that technology from Leader Technologies. It's called Leader Plus. And it tells you fake numbers all throughout the night to control the people going to the polls, telling them which direction it's going. There are no partial reportings. Think of that. I'm just going to stop all of your brainwashing, all your subliminal programming. There are no partial reportings. All day long, they give you partial reportings. No such thing. All lies. And what do they do? They tell you who the winner is ahead of time, just like they did with Gillum. And then what do they do? They tell you when they make the mistake later that it wasn't a problem, but they go to the blue cities, the sanctuary cities, sanctuary states, sanctuary cities. And what do they do? In the beginning, they take the Democrats and they give them huge amounts of numbers because they know they're going to get a bunch of uh, numbers from uh, particularly illegal aliens. And they know that that's where they're going to have their votes, right? That's where the big blue vote comes from, right? The numbers go up in the beginning telling everybody, oh, Republicans don't even go vote. You're going to lose so bad. The blue wave is so gigantic. And then in the end, what comes? Then they don't give you, though they had all the early votes from those blue cities, but in the end, oh, they don't have the votes. They're still rolling in, just like the ones we're seeing in Florida. But if we had by partisan chain of custody, you wouldn't have vans rolling in the middle of the night filled with ballots that have already been pre-marked. Absolutely. And it is an oxymoron to concede and then not to concede. Can't do it, folks. Can't do it. The election is over. That used to be the game. Leader plus, it was called something else before that. It was called uh, uh, how to take away the uh, uh, election night headache, I believe, is what literally was its name. Uh, But what it is, is it's telling you who wins ahead of time. And then when they call it, then notice all the other ones call it almost the same time because they're all reading the same exact script. Well, look, people aren't foolish out here. We saw the crowds that were drawn to Trump rallies. They were just huge. And then we saw Obama and Oprah and some of these lame second tier, third tier Democrats try to pull people together and they couldn't even get a high school gym half filled. filled. It's just too obvious now. I got a solution. Don't count Florida. Well, just they don't yes. count. No, I, not anymore. No, no. They've been we've cheating got, too long. No, we've got great people in Florida. Well, so. yeah, but if they're just going to cheat and they can't on. provide paper ballots, and if they are obviously cheating in front of the whole world, that the president has to say this is an embarrassment to our country and to democracy, and it doesn't stop. Why doesn't it stop right there? Because lawyers are because involved. Because we know who runs Broward County, and exactly. that's why it doesn't stop right there. In the 2016 election, I was winning by so much in Florida that Broward County, which was very late with vote tabulation and probably getting ready to do a number, couldn't do it because not enough people live in Broward for them to falsify a victory. I hope you understand what he's saying there. They wait exactly as I just said until the end when they know how many votes they need. The votes rush in. Those are all fake votes. This happens all over America, especially where the blue is in charge. Now, let me give you examples. uh, Vice President Pence was put in charge of an elections ethics committee. They got, they asked all the states, send in all your information. 17 states complied and voluntarily sent in their information. From that, they found from 17 states. And by the way, it ended immediately after that because the rest of the states, particularly blue states, said, no, we're not going to comply. We're not going to give you our votes. We're not going to let the vice president of America see whether there was election rigging. Well, what did they find out? 17 states reporting 3.5 to 5 million illegal aliens voted in the 2016 election. That's where Hillary Clinton got the popular vote. Those were all illegal votes. Now, let me just go back. Then after that, 
okay, I would want to call them names, but I'm not going to. Hillary and Jill Stein said they wanted a recount. So two states started the recount. When the third state got in, they went to a certain city, and the city I know very, very well. And they started, uh, that city is so noted for uh, voting corruption, it's disgusting. They started counting, and what they found was the first city they looked into in that state, 60,000 people more than the entire population of the city, including men, women, and children, voted for Hillary. 60,000 people more than the entire population voted for Hillary. And guess what happened? The recount stopped immediately. Immediately. Okay. Why didn't that get acted upon? Why aren't well, the it, why aren't the Federal Election Commission charges <laughs> against the Democratic National Committee being looked into? Why isn't the illegal money from Oleg Deripaska that was given to at, to Fusion GPS to help the Democratic National Committee create with Russian and foreign British help and all kinds of other help work against Trump? Okay, Oleg Deripaska is a Russian, folks. Well, let's not go down that path. But the reason that they do is because you've got senior executive service lodged in our government that's keeping anything from happening. The next tweet reads, Thank you, Marco Rubio, for helping to expose the potential corruption going on with respect to election theft in Broward and Palm Beach counties. The world is now watching closely. I was going to point out, they don't mention Palm Beach County. That's just as corrupt as, as, as Browder. Well, even Broward. Pinellas County. If you looked at Florida that night, you saw all of the red areas had pretty much given their vote and they were tallied. But then all along the fringes and in the uh, larger cities, no votes had been finalized yet. Well, the reason is, duh, they were holding back to see how many votes they needed to shore it up. Yep. And when he says the world, all in caps, is now watching closely... That's Putin, who they blame for a meddling. That would be Soros, who is meddling. That would be the Brits, who didn't get to meddle as much this time as they usually are used to. Therefore, they're really upset they didn't get there. But the best of all, the best of all, is that all 17 U.S. intelligence agencies are all watching closely, folks. And that is the last laugh. That is so funny because how many times did we we hear Hillary Clinton say 70, all 17 of the intelligence agencies of our intelligence community all agreed that Putin personally was after her and working for Trump and was paying Trump and blah, 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 blah. Well, now the world is watching, Hillary, and it's not going to be what you said. And the fact of the matter is that your election rigging machine, it's an institution, folks. It starts with election campaign financing fraud. So bad, we've gone into it before. Anyone who takes a dollar from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is corrupt. And that is everyone who votes with the party line, okay? So what are we working with here? Trump allowed this to happen. He allowed it to happen. He's threatened monopoly, antitrust, RICO, but he did not stop Facebook. He did not stop Twitter, Google, all of them. He didn't stop them. Why not? He let them commit their crimes exactly as Betsy yeah. said so yeah. that they all could go to jail. And now, the big, fat, juicy tweet to wrap it all up. You ready? I hope so. Just out in Arizona, and this is in all caps, signatures don't match. Electoral corruption, call for a new election? We must protect our democracy. Well, Betsy, you got me on that one. I don't know whose the signatures are. But if signatures don't match, hello? All, here's what happens. In sanctuary states like California, anyone, anyone, anyone can walk in to the DMV, uh, the Department of Motor Vehicles, and say, I want a license. You take the test, you get one. That gives you the right to vote. Okay? And then your signature on that is the only signature you need to vote if you even are asked to give a signature. So perhaps he's talking about the fact that the signatures don't match in that way, but it could be others. When he says the electoral process could be people signing off of uh, verification, validation, could be that those signatures don't match. I don't know what that means, but if he said that, it's fraud. That means twice in the tweets we just went through, he said a crime was committed. That means that if Matt Whitaker is doing his job, 
he needed to uh, open an investigation right there. And he did because, oh, three. And the third one was he said that he's sending, Trump is sending bigger and better lawyers than Perkins Cooley yeah, but, and Mark Elias. But Trump is, he, is he saying, suggesting that we should have another election? Hey, I'm all for it because we showed you that the rigging is so massive that every election in this country is compromised. Maybe we need to have an election, a do-over, with paper ballots and voter ID. Well, the Democrat, yes, you're correct, absolutely. Is that what he's calling for in this tweet? Well, what he's calling for is that between now and 2020 that some people get put in jail. It takes years to put people in jail for these things, usually. If Matt Whitaker wants to uh, force it, he can do it much quicker. But if we take a revote, we know we have a red tsunami, and then we'll own the House and the Senate, and we can work a lot faster. That would be true. But people would say Trump was crazy. So what he's doing now is he's making all of them expose themselves because they thought that he was weak. They thought that he wasn't going to do what he's about to do. They didn't know Sessions was going to be fired before that presser. And when everyone was saying, who's going to leave in the cabinet? He's going, there's going to, people are going to come, people are going to go. People are going to come, people are going to go. Uh, yeah, bye-bye, Sessions. Bye-bye, Rat Rosenstein. Bye-bye, uh, Mueller. And by the way, give the money back, you SES pigs. You didn't do any work. It was all fake. And by the way, there was never a crime. So the entire thing was a waste of time, and you knew it as a lawyer. By that, simply because of your odious, illegal decisions all through it, we shouldn't pay you. We should demand any money that you and your group has ever been paid to give back. And we should give Paul Manafort his freedom back and, and Rick Gates. And sorry you had to go to jail, uh, George Papadopoulos, for a day. And anyone else, uh, Flynn, if you actually get convicted, none of you should take any of those convictions. And all of your plea deals, reverse them now. Because it has been shown that Mueller's investigation is completely fallacious because of Concord catering has demonstrated that there is no crime. They are not investigating a crime. There is no crime. There is no such crime as collusion to conspire and such things as that. So what we're saying is the time has come when the new sheriff in town is really going to start to kick some rear. And Sessions going out the door was the best thing that could have happened. And whoever he puts in that job afterwards is going to sound the new tone of the next six years because 